Do I think that Bose can break into the top two this season? No, I'm pretty positive that they won't. What's going on guys and welcome back to LOI TV. Now today we're going to be doing the first of 10 videos. We're going to be looking at each of the 10 teams in the Premier Division in the League of Ireland and having a look at it and asking kind of what do we expect from each team in 2020. I'm so excited for the upcoming season guys. How excited are you? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please make sure to like the video and most importantly remember to subscribe. Let's jump right into it with the first team we're going to be looking at, as you're probably aware, Bohemians. For each team, I'm going to break it down into three kind of categories. First one being how they did last season. The next one being how different is their team from this season to last season. And the final uh, thing we're going to be looking at is their aspirations for the upcoming campaign. When I say their aspirations, they're kind of, in my opinion, what they should be aiming for. Now, last season, Bohemians, of course, overachieved all expectations, finishing third in the league, securing the Europa League place, and also not really exceeding expectations, but they did reach the semi-finals of the cup, which is a good achievement in itself. The big factor for Bohemians last season was that their recruitment was really, really good. Keith Long and Trevor Crowley did a really, really good job in bringing in players. Coming back from England, for example, a couple of players coming back and they had a real instant impact. Lots of them instantly becoming fan favourites and uh, one receiving an Ireland call-up and a couple in the under-21s as well, which is a really good achievement for the club. Now, if you're looking at Bose's starting, kind of starting 11 from last season um, and comparing it to what I think it's going to be for the upcoming campaign, Unlike previous uh, years, Bohemians have actually been able to keep hold of their stars um, in previous years. I've seen Bohemians being, uh, being really ransacked for players. A lot of their star, star performers from the previous season were moving on to either abroad or to higher teams in the league. But this year, they've really done a good job of being able to keep hold of some of their star men. Despite this, they have lost two top class fullbacks in the shape of Dara Leahy and Derek Pender. Leahy has moved on to Champions Dundalk, whereas Pender has retired from football. Um, and his, his, uh, lead, he was their captain last season, of course. Uh, so his leadership will be really uh, missed on and off the pitch. And uh, just that character in the dressing room, and um, being able to look at him on the pitch and kind of just seeing the leader and uh, being able to trust in him so much. So that's, that's, that's definitely going to be a loss. Obviously Leahy, uh, two seasons ago, in the team of the year and last season. A little bit unlucky with injuries, but he is a top class left back and will definitely be missed. In terms of replacing these two at right back, Bose do have a ready-made replacement in the form of Andy Lyons. He actually played plenty of football last season with Leahy being out injured, for example, and actually getting in ahead of Pender at, at times as well. Um, his impressive performances did catch the eye of a lot of teams abroad. I think Wimbledon were, um, were ha had definitely had an interest in him. I think they might have made an offer as well. And still being a teenager, this kid could have a really, really big campaign. At left back, Bowes actually did a really good job of bringing in a replacement before actually losing Dara Leahy. They actually brought in Anto Breslin from First Division Longford Town. Of course, he was named in the First Division team of the season last year. So replacements don't get much stronger than that. It is going to be a step up from, of course, playing against higher caliber players. But I think this could be a really shrewd piece of business from Bowes. Goalkeeper James Tobber had a really, really good uh, first campaign with Bowes moved back from England, I think he's with Sunderland before that. His impressive performances last season actually resulted in him earning an Irish call-up. Bowes have brought in Stephen McGuinness from Cabin Teeley to be his understudy for next season. Bowes also have strengthened at the heart of the defence, bringing back Dan Casey from Cork City. He had spent the year there, uh, he was with Bowes previously before that. Uh, he was a bit of a fan favourite at Bohemians as well, and Keith Long definitely likes him and was, uh, was quick to bring him back to the club uh, once it was announced that he was going to leave Cork City. So he's going to be competing with um, James Finnerty and Rob Cornwall who are really, really solid last season at the heart of the defence. Um, so that's a really, really good signing for Bowes and it's going to add a lot of competition for places, which is good as well. They're going to have a lot of games with um, the league, the, with Europe and with the cup. So having an extra centre half of that quality in your in your ranks is, uh, can only be a positive really. Now moving into midfield, Bohemians always play with kind of two holding central midfielders. The first one being ever present Keith Buckley, who will keep his place after another solid consistent season last year. Connor Levingston played alongside him for the most part last season, but the return of JJ Lunny from Waterford will definitely add some competition to places uh, for these two roles. In my opinion, I think JJ Lunny is probably the best ball player out of the tree so I think it's most more than likely that he'll probably pair up with Keith Buckley in this position um, in Keith Long's strongest starting 11. In front of them then usually Bowes play with kind of two wide players and a number 10. In the number 10 role he doesn't really need any introduction 
Danny Mandreu, the Young Player of the Year from last season. Brought back from England where he was at Brighton uh, the year before last, he made an instant impact on the league and tore to shreds. He returned an excellent goals and assists tally. And still at only 21 years of age, Mandreu can only get better and better from here. Out on the right hand side is going to be their real breakthrough academy star, Danny Grant. He looked insanely good last season and um, tore left backs to shreds at times. Really, really frightening for left backs to see him. He has real good pace, very good on the ball, very good uh, dribbler. And um, he's only 19, I think. So, and he made it into the uh, Stephen Kenny's under 21 Ireland squad as well. So it was a really, really good year for Danny Grant. And I think the sky's the limit for him, to be honest. Out on the left hand side, you could maybe play uh, one of the experienced players like Keith Ward. But I think um, Keith Long's going to go with Chris Twardick, a new signing from Sligo Rovers. Probably the signing that's gone under the radar the most from Bowes. He's kind of an unknown. Um, but he was decent with Sligo last year. And interestingly enough, he actually has two caps for the Canada national team. Given Keith Long's previous um, record with bringing in transfers and how well they've done, you can only imagine that he's done his homework on him. And if Keith Long sees something in him, who, are, who's, who is anyone to say that's not going to be a good sign? And up top for Bohemians, we are going to see the return of their main striker, Dini Corcoran. He was desperately unlucky last season, picking up a horrible injury about a month or two into the campaign. He's in really, really good form at the time as well. I think he had hit seven goals already that season, uh, which ended up being a really good tally for the whole campaign and he was only playing in it for a month or two. So his loss uh, was a huge blow for Bohemians. And of course, I'm not gonna know how well his recovery has gone until we see him back out on the pitch, but fingers crossed he's gonna be back to himself for the new campaign. Bows have brought in Glenn McCauley from St. Patrick's Athletic. Bit unproven from last season, we didn't see an awful lot of him. He didn't impress too much, um, but he might get more of an opportunity this season. Um, he's gonna provide competition to Dinny alongside Andre Wright. In my opinion, Neither of them are able to bring what Dini brings to the Bohemians team in terms of linking up the play um, and scoring the amount of goals. I don't think either of them would score the amount of goals that Dini would. Um, I just remember last season, Dini and Danny Manjou, so many games they were just linking up together brilliantly. Um, they had a real like connection together. And I think it was the game away in Derry with the, that they won 2-0 and their, 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 um, their partnership in the final third was really evident to see and if Bowes can reignite that this season they could be a real force to be reckoned with. Dinny of course is in his 30s now and with Pender leaving he's really going to have to step up in terms of being a character in the dressing room and showing those leadership, leadership skills alongside the likes of Keith Ward because this is quite a young squad. In terms of the aspirations for Bohemians this season I think Bowes fans can be really feeling positive about the upcoming campaign. The squad is strong and they will be competing in Europe, as I said, for the first time in a while. And there's a real feel-good factor at the club at the moment. Whether Europe will have a detrimental effect on their uh, league table position come the end of the season remains to be seen. But I'd say anything below fourth in the league would have to go down as a disappointment for Bowes. Some fans would probably even say that fourth would be seen as disappointing. But I think if they were to get fourth place and it ensured European football, I don't think many of them could be complaining, to be honest. Do I think that Bowes can break into the top two this season? No, I'm pretty positive that they won't. Just in terms of consistency throughout the year, I just don't think they have what it takes to keep pace with the top two for the full campaign. And I firmly believe that getting Europe again and um, finishing in the top four would be seen as a really good achievement for both. I'm not sure fans are going to get carried away in terms of their expectations because of last season, but I just think that a top four finish would be another fantastic achievement for Bohemians. What do you guys think, especially you Bohemians fans? I want to hear what you have to say down in the comments below. Do you think you can break into that top two? Am I talking nonsense? Let me know. If you did enjoy the video, guys, please make sure to like it, share, and most importantly, subscribe.